Hi folks, welcome to Nessie Tame It. Today we're going to be talking about three different types of lenses, okay? They're similar in price, alright, but they're quite different. Now, the reason why I'm uh, wanting to talk about this is because I have a friend out there who's asking me, um, you know, what, which lens to choose from. So this is coming from my own personal opinion, okay? And uh, I tested it and I photographed, I used it and I, I did the best I could with it and, and tried to get the, the most I can. I'm not basing this on some type of technical details from Nikon. I'm basing this on my own view, my own opinion, what I see. Okay, so here are the three lenses we have. We have the Nikon Nikkor 28 to 70 mil. It's an f3.5 to 4.5D. This is an AFD. Now most people, they love this lens. It's a quality lens. A lot of people go after it. It sells for maybe anywhere, I don't know, uh, 60 to maybe 150. You know, it depends on condition and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Again, we have the next lens we have is the 18 to 55 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 G. This is a DX lens, okay? So this is a full frame lens. This is a DX lens. And this too, as well, is a full frame lens, FX lens. That means it used to be on film cameras, okay? They used to go on film cameras. Let me show you what it looks like. I got this on a D300, I have this on a D300S, and I have this on a D200. So that's what it looks like. Okay, and this is what it sounds like. It's a really nice lens, okay? There was a little bit of damage right there. So, so, so tiny, it's insignificant. Right, you see that a little tiny little nick right there? Right, but that's it. Other than that, this is a really beautiful lens. Now, there's something that um, I photographed this little Coco here, okay? And uh, take a look at Coco right now. You, you got Coco on there? Okay, good. Okay, I took a, a photograph of Coco using this lens. And this lens, you have to remember, you have to hold it steady. You have to bring it up so that you can really get a nice image okay and there you go and then you take the picture now what did I think of the picture well I compared it to taking it with an 18 to 55 millimeter DX lens with the vibration reduction on right and both images came out pretty much the same at slow speeds okay now again I took a uh, this is the 18 to 55 DX lens. This lens is all, this is mint condition. So this is like brand new, this particular lens right here. Yeah. Using this lens, it was nice. It was easy to use. It's consistent. Okay. Where that lens can, can sometimes, the 28 to 70, be a little bit sharper in some cases. This lens is consistent, consistently sharp, because if you have a little bit of vibrations, remember, the weight of a lens, the weight of a camera, you take two kilograms, you think of two kilograms, it's nothing. Hold it out in front of you. Hold it for a while. And you'll start to get them shakes. You won't even realize it. And that's where this lens right here, it came in, the 35 to 80 millimeter F4 to 5.6D, AFD. Now this lens right here is light. It's flexible. It has a, a plastic, it, it's made totally plastic, this particular lens. It's um, plastic on the inside, plastic on the outside, which makes it very light and easy to handle. When I photographed Coco, the image was a, just a tad bit sharper at slow speeds, okay? Um, I'm going to see if I can show you the images on all three cameras. This is with the, um, th and this is on a D200 as well. So the advantage is not to this camera. But um, bringing it right there, 
I don't know if you can see that, little Coco. Yeah? Yeah? And uh, let's stay right there. I'm going to bring the D, the 18 to 55 to you on the D300. Oh, uh, let me go back to uh, last picture. There you go. That's the 18 to 55 DX. You know? Obviously, doing uh, on a D300S. The image is a little bit better, okay? Yeah? The image is a little bit better because, you know, and then we have the 28 to 70. Okay? And that's that image. This is on a D300. All right? So, in close, very close inspection, on very close inspection, the, the D200 with the 35 to 80, came out just a tad bit sharper. And I was a little bit shocked. I was like, oh, that's, that's unusual. I was expecting the 28 to 70. Or maybe the 80, 18 to 55. Like I said, the 1855 is DX is consistently perfect in everything. Meaning if you do, even when I'm a little bit jittery or you know, I've, I've taken a lot or a quick shot, it's consistent. And that's what people go for. They go for that consistency, you know? Rather than, let's see if I can get it extra sharp, like with a 28 to 70, you might want to say, oh, I could do better. You can keep on trying to do better. And then next thing you know, you, you have a tripod and everything else. And that's why some people go for the 1855. And remember what I told you about the weight. Holding something, the heavier it is, the more you start to shake. You don't realize it, but you know, you start to, you start to shake as you're trying to take the image. And let me show you this now. Look down here on the camera. So I want you to look at the three cameras. Okay? Now, I'm holding this up. Yeah? As you can see, I'm holding this particular one up. Falls straight down. Now this one seems to be balanced, right? Did you see it? I have to lift it up. Stays down. Now the 35 to 80. because of its light. So heavy, no. Light, heavy, heavier. And the heavier the lens is in the front, the more you're gonna get a little bit of a shake. Do you understand that? But there's one more thing. Aesthetics. What do you like on your camera? Because sometimes you say to yourself, I want the 28 to 70 because I'm an old kind of guy. I like the I like photographing from the good old days, popping it onto a film camera. You might have an F801, an F601, an F90X, an F5, an F4. And you say, I remember the 28 to 70, it's a good lens. You know what I mean? I'm not having anything other. It's made out of metal, metal construction, plastic, a plastic exterior, but all metal and constructions with a metal bayonet. Okay? With a metal bayonet. None of these other two lenses have that. So, you know, you might want to go for something like that. Whereas the DX lens and the, um, like I said, the other lens is, um, let me just get that a little bit lower. The other lenses are a plastic bayonet. So, but then you might be surprised to know that the DX lens is only for DX cameras. And if you use a film camera, you get that little kind of circuit. The image is in a circular image and everything is dark. Vionetting on the outside. Well, it's not vionetting. It's just, it's blocked out. And you only get the circle on a full frame camera. So these lenses are only for DX. But the, the great thing about these lenses is that because it's a AFS, it will work on any camera. Well, any newer cameras. So if you're talking about a D3000, a 3300, a 3500, and one of these newer, smaller, portable cameras, a tiny, this lens will work because it's an AFS. Now, I'm going to leave it right there. I think I've covered just about everything. Take a look at what you think. I'm going to hold it up to you because a friend, like I said, he wants to know what it looks like. So there's the aesthetics of it, okay? Yeah?
That's nice. That's a 35 to 80. Let's try out this DX right here. VR. Yeah. And then here we have the D300 with the 28 to 70. Remember, this has a metal interior, plastic on the outside, but metal on the inside with a metal bayonet. It's more your vintage lens, your older, older type lens. Okay, so there you go, folks. You take a look at it. Whoa, hey, stop moving. And I'll leave it there.